irregular periods, acne, body hair, scalp hair loss, difficulty losing weight. So many PCOS women suffer from some or all of these symptoms. Today I'll be reviewing the top six medication options that we currently have to battle these symptoms. You don't want to miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Maj. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics, news, and headlines. So more than one in 10 women actually have PCOS. And sadly, these women often go undiagnosed and suffer for years without even knowing that there's an actual medical reason for all of their struggles. And by suffer, I really mean suffer. PCOS is a torturous beast. Note. If you're not certain if you have PCOS, make sure to listen to my prior video on this topic before you go on. But for the rest of you, here is the nitty gritty on the top six medication treatments that you can discuss with your doctor. Here we go. Number one, metformin. This is a commonly prescribed medication for diabetics that has also been FDA approved for PCOS. It's interesting because it decreases glucose production in the liver, thereby decreasing the glucose levels floating in the bloodstream. And you may be wondering, well, why would this help PCOS? It's a great question. Well, people with PCOS, like diabetics, actually tend to also struggle with something called insulin resistance, which means that their cells are resistant to insulin, which is responsible for opening up the receptors or think of them as doorways of sorts, on our cells to let the glucose into the cells. So when these doorways aren't sensitive to insulin, it means that they really are not letting insulin do its job. And so the pancreas keeps pumping out more and more insulin to get that glucose into the cells. And it's this elevated insulin that signals to the brain and to cause weight gain. And it's the elevated insulin that also attacks our ovaries and sends it out of whack, and hence increasing androgen production meaning the typical male-like hormone or testosterone. We all have it, even women, but to some extent. So it increases the androgen production by the ovaries and interfering with menstrual periods and ovulation, along with all the symptoms that we see with elevated androgens, like think acne or body hair or scalp hair loss. So with metformin, if we have less glucose running around in our bloodstream, then not as much insulin will be circulating and hence we will experience less of its complications. I've seen it work for some PCOS patients very well and others not so much truthfully. Everyone is different especially with something like PCOS which is really like a spectrum of a syndrome that varies from mild to severe. Interestingly metformin has been shown to restore ovulation and 30 to 50% of women with PCOS. Be careful if you don't want to get pregnant, I've seen it happen. And metformin may also help with weight loss, but it works best along with diet and exercise. Number two, hormonal contraceptives. PCOS women who do not shed their uterine lining at least every three months, meaning have a period, they have a higher risk of cancer of the lining of the uterus called the endometrium. This is one of the reasons that hormonal contraception is really one of the first line treatments that we have for PCOS. It also helps to improve the symptoms associated with androgen excess, like, like I mentioned, like testosterone. So symptoms like acne, scalp hair loss, and excess body hair. The excess body hair, it's a term that we refer to as hirsutism. And of course, it has an added benefit as birth control for people who do not want to get pregnant. So even though PCOS women tend to ovulate less often than other women do, they still often do intermittently. And so pregnancy can be sometimes a surprise since it's more unpredictable. For combined contraceptives, meaning the ones with a combination of estrogen and progesterone, in PCOS it really requires at least 20 micrograms of estrogen and for some even a higher dose of 30 to 35 micrograms. And a progesterone component with lower androgen activity is preferred because some progesterones can actually increase androgens and you don't want that. So more preferred progesterones for PCOS include norethandrone, but there are other options as well that include desigestrel and drospirinone that work just as well but may have a slightly higher risk of blood clots than norethandrone does. Risk of blood clots for women over age 40 and with those who have a body mass index of 30 or more is slightly higher. So for those women, it may be worthwhile to consider another alternative that does not include 
estrogen, meaning a progesterone only type of method. And these include the daily mini pill or the progesterone IUD, or even cyclical medroxyprogesterone. You don't have to remember that name. It's five to 10 milligrams for 10 to 14 days out of every month, every one or two months, instead of an everyday pill like the mini pill. Although cyclical progesterone will not improve acne or hirsutism, and of course, it's not gonna prevent pregnancy. Number three, spironolactone. Now, PCOS women tend to have higher levels of these andro androgens, like I mentioned, and you can think of spironolactone really like a weak anti-testosterone. It can help increase scalp hair, it can help thin out some of the body hair, and it's even FDA approved for the acne. So if after six months of hormonal contraceptives, the acne and the hirsutism doesn't improve, spironolactone can be added as an option. Now, it's contraindicated in pregnancy since it can cause fetal malformations. Therefore, it's vital to already be on some type of birth control if you're sexually active. Also, it is used to lower blood pressure in those with hypertension. So if you already have low blood pressures, you've got to be careful and it can increase blood potassium levels, and this must be routinely checked while taking spironolactone. Number four, topicals for hirsutism. Now, prescription eflornithine cream, 13.9%, can be applied to the facial skin that's containing the excess body hair and helps to suppress the hair growth there. But it may take up to two months for you to start seeing a difference and it really must be used indefinitely. If you stop using it, the hair growth often returns. Also, it's cosmetic, so insurance plans don't always cover it and it may be rather costly. Number five, minoxidil for scalp hair loss. Now, this is really the same thing as over-the-counter Rogaine. Minoxidil is the generic and it's much less costly. Minoxidil itself in pill form is used to treat high blood pressure, but patients developed hair growth as a side effect. So it was then formulated into a solution to be used directly on the scalp for those with hair loss. It is inexpensive and available over the counter without a prescription. And there are two versions, one's for men and one's for women. The only difference really is the concentration. So actually women can use the men's formula, which is stronger. But if you develop hair growth in unwanted places like the face, then you may want to revert to the women's concentration. But no worries, the hair growth is often reversible once the solution is discontinued. But the same goes for the scalp. If you stop using it on the scalp, the hair will fall out once again. So it really just must be used indefinitely. Number six, liraglutide. This is a rather newer weight loss drug and is approved for those with a body mass index of 30 or higher. Otherwise, insurance may not cover it. And even if it is covered, it can still be costly. It activates a receptor in the brain called the GLP-1 that regulates appetite. But again, you must ask yourself, is this really the long-term solution? Because it can help motivate you initially, and that may be fine, but eventually you must change your lifestyle and take control of your own body. Note that weight loss, diet, and exercise are still the first line treatment for PCOS. I've discussed this in a previous video uh, on, in, on PCOS, and I'll place a link to it in the description down below. Interestingly, cardiovascular exercise itself, even without weight loss, has also been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Now, weight loss of even 10% has been shown to restore ovulation and menstrual periods for many PCOS women. It improves pregnancy rates, it improves insulin sensitivity and decreases testosterone levels. And specifically, the intermittent fasting lifestyle can be especially helpful in PCOS women. Notice how I did not use the word diet because it really takes a lifestyle change for weight loss to be maintained long-term. I've reviewed intermittent fasting in multiple other videos as well, but in a nutshell, it helps decrease the release of insulin by your pancreas over time. And as we know, insulin is the key player in causing obesity and causing problems with PCOS. So make sure to check out those videos. I'll place them in the description as well. Now, as a last resort, there's weight loss surgery. The health plan coverage is easier if your body mass index is 40 or higher, or if it is less than 40 and you have an underlying medical comorbidity, we call it, meaning another condition like diabetes, sleep apnea, 
etc. Now, if you suffer from PCOS, what has been the greatest struggle for you? The hair growth, the weight gain, the period problems? Share it with us down in the description below. Let's show everyone how common this condition is and how vital it is to talk about it so that you know that you are not alone. If you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, give it a like, hit that red subscribe button along with that notification bell that's next to it so you don't miss any of my future videos. And please feel free to share it with someone else who may find it useful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay healthy and I'll catch you next time. Yeah.